Student engagement and buy-in has always been an ongoing challenge for the classroom teacher, and in no year was that more evident than the one we've just come through. With everybody being distanced from one another, feeling isolated, feeling alone, and really struggling to reach out and make truly meaningful connections both as students and teachers. And this is why it is so important to begin cultivating a classroom community from day one of interactivity where individual voices are heard and respected. Hi and welcome to Classroom Confidential. My name is Christopher Youngren and I'm a middle school ELA teacher in Tucson, Arizona. Here on this channel, I share tips and strategies I've used both in person and online, things that keep me sane and my students engaged. I'm delighted to share my ideas and experiences with you, so welcome. Now, whatever attitude you may be getting from your average middle schooler or high school student, students want to be heard. Remember, we're still talking about children, and this has been a crazy year. Most of the world has been online, learning virtually, and many students have probably felt pretty insecure and alone, feeling like they don't matter, they don't make a difference, that their voices don't make a difference, and that is why it is so important to reach out as educators and say, I see you, you're important, and what you have to say makes a difference, at least to me. And so I begin every one of my classes each day with something I call community time. And it's about 10 minutes, maybe 12, of just talking, reaching out to the students, seeing how they are. Did anybody do anything exciting over the weekend? Does anybody have any exciting plans coming up? But I also use something called a question of the day. It's a way to gain insight into our students' lives and learn more about them as individuals. Now, the question of the day can be silly or serious. It could be fun, it could be frivolous, or it could be more probing, more intellectual, but the point is is it gives us a little bit of a glimpse into how our students are thinking and where they're coming from. So I use questions like, what was your favorite childhood toy? What uh, is something from elementary school that you missed? Something that you wish you still had in middle school? If you were a superhero, what would your superpower be? If you had a YouTube channel, what would it be about? If you had an extra hour every day, how would you spend it? If you had 15 minutes of fame, what would you do with it? And what is the absolute worst thing to ever put on a pizza? Or maybe something as simple as pancakes or waffles. You'd be surprised how many heated arguments have come about as a result of something seemingly so innocuous. But the point is these questions are designed to help you connect with your students, even if it's just in a silly way. There's nothing wrong with just having a little bit of fun. Remember, you have to be the most interesting app on the computer. You have to be the most interesting thing in the room or you are going to lose them. So starting off the day with a little bit of fun, hey, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if it gets their attention and holds it. And it also sets you up to be a leader, not a manager. I, I would hope that most teachers get into teaching because they truly are interested in children, in the education of our young people, rather than just being a micromanager and getting people to do what we say because we say it. So when you take this time on a daily basis to truly reach out and connect to your students and say, I see you, you're important, and I respect you, they are going to be much more likely to give you that respect in return. Give respect, get respect is an adage that has served me well over the years. And it starts by focusing on your students. How are your students? How are they feeling today? You want to know a quick trick to figure out how everyone's doing? Fist to five. Fist to five is something I use all the time. Fist being I'm terrible, five being best day ever. And if somebody shows me a three or lower, I immediately hone in on that person and I check in and I spend maybe a couple extra seconds with them and, and say, hey, are, are you really not feeling too great? Or is there something bothering you? Or are you just looking for attention? Whatever the case may be. But it's a great way to read an entire room or an entire Zoom gallery all at once, immediately. 
Look, no doubt about it, curriculum is important and you are not just here to have fun and play games. But until you can establish that connection with your students as really caring about them and being here for them, not making it all about you and all the very, very important things you have to say, but making it about them and what do they need as individuals to really give a darn about whatever you're teaching them. Until you can do that, you're not going to have them and your job is going to be 10 times more difficult as a result. So take the time every day. Spend a few minutes just talking. You don't have to use the questions of the day. You don't have to use the fist of five, but just talk to them. Say, how you doing? Great to see you. Spend the time and that investment will make all the difference. I promise you. Thank you for joining me today. I wish you the best of luck with the remainder of the school year. If you're looking for more student engagement strategies, be sure to check out some of the other videos right here on this channel. It's chock full of stuff that I've found to be very, very valuable in my own classroom experience. Be well out there, stay safe, take care of yourselves and take care of someone else. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.